What is up my crazy simps? In the last episode we built a fission reactor and started producing polonium and plutonium. Checked on those real fast, we have about 20,000 pellets of each. Polonium and plutonium. Now you might notice that this looks a little different than uh, it did when I built it. Well, off camera I decided to up the ante. It just was not producing as fast as I would have liked it to produce. Now it is. Now it's producing amazingly. I upgraded this to an 18 by 18 by 18. Our new burn rate is now 240 millibuckets per tick. We're only burning at about 200 millibuckets though. That's about all we can handle. <laughs> but our max is 240. That means we have about 240 of these fuel assembly rods in here. I got a fuel setup producing at almost the maximum it could make right now with this one isotopic centrifuge. The only limit that we have is this chemical dissolution chamber. It just cannot produce the hydrofluoric acid that we need fast enough. <laughs> and the way I built it, I can't exactly put any more around it. So uh, we're just gonna have to deal with it. I mean, I think we're doing pretty good with what we've got going on. I also tweaked our polonium and plutonium uh, setup just a little bit. I put down these pressurized reaction chambers, which these using fluoride dust is what turns the polonium gas into polonium pellets and plutonium pellets alternatively. Anyways, this brings us to our next order of business. Making, instead of a fission reactor, making a fusion reactor. So the first step is to get all of these blocks up here. I need a fusion reactor controller, 36 fusion reactor frames, 3 fusion reactor ports, and 25 reactor glass. So I'm going to get that real fast. It requires a lot of polonium, which is why we're making polonium so much, is so we can have this. And the reason why we need to make this fusion reactor is because it can produce up to 200 million RF per tick. And it's honestly not that hard to make. Aside from the casing itself requiring so much uh, ultimate control circuits or polonium, really atomic alloys, these are really the hard parts of making it. But other than that, it's not that hard to make. And we are going to get into it very soon. So let's go ahead and make these uh, fusion reactor casings that I need to make and all these other stuff, the ports and everything. And I'll see you guys in just a moment. All right, guys, so we got all of our casings. And now the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to do this uh, mess with lasers, <laughs> because in order to start this, we're going to have to have these lasers uh, pump just like a buttload of energy into the reactor just to kickstart it. And what I'm going to do is I am going to build this laser array so that we can get it to start storing energy because we're going to need at least 400 million RF. <laughs> which is gonna take me quite a long time to uh, store up. Let's get this started. We're gonna need a laser amplifier and three lasers. It isn't too hard to make. We just gotta have a bunch of stuff that we don't have. Okay. <laughs> All right, so what you do with this laser amplifier is you just place it down and we're gonna get our lasers pumping into it and it's gonna shoot out a little laser beam into our reactor whenever we tell it to. So what we gotta do is we gotta place down our lasers, boom. Well, ow, these lasers will hurt you. It catches me on fire. Luckily, I'm immune to fire, but you gotta be careful of it. There you go. And they don't just run. They've been sitting in inventory, so, they, ooh, so they've been storing up some power. There you go. Let's get all the lasers in like that. We'll put a lever at the bottom, just like that. That way, when we need to, we can power. Oh, you see that? Giant laser beam. Oh, this thing will break blocks and destroy them, apparently. Heck. Yeah, so we'll just get this powered up with some cables. There you go. And we're just going to let it charge. We've got to store 400 million RF in it, at least. <laughs> so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be here for a while. But while it's charging up, let me show you how to make this thing. So this thing is very simple to make. All you got to do is make this little pattern on all six sides. It's going to look just like that uh, in this little hole. And so let me just fill in all the blanks. There we go, just like that. And the rest is gonna be glass. Left out a couple spots, this one right here and these three right here. These are going to be our ports. So we're gonna place down our three ports right there. And this up here is going to be our fusion reactor controller. There you go, you see the red sparks with mechanism. That means that you did a good job and you made it. Sadly, I am trapped in here and I can never get out. So yeah, we did it, we got out. That scared the heck out of me. <laughs> that scared the mess out of me. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, I gotta light this place up. But anyways, we got this all made up, and sadly, I'm gonna have to destroy it real fast. And let me go over the rest of the build. So in order to power this reactor, we're going to have to give it some fuel, much like a fu uh, fission reactor, except it's going to take a lot less steps. Thank goodness. <laughs> the fission reactor destroyed my brain. But the fusion reactor, surprisingly, <laughs> is much easier to build and to power. So what we're going to need is we're going to need deuterium and we're going to need tritium. Deuterium is super easy to make. So let's get on into it. We're going to need an electric pump and a filter upgrade because we are going to be filtering water into heavy water. So let's go ahead and make that electric pump. Super easy to make. All you need is one of them too. And honestly, we could probably just put it down right here. There you go. It is going to need some power though. So let me just stretch on a cable over here. There you go. Give it some power. And right beneath it, we are going to put a single block of water. Just like so. Look at that. And it's going to start pumping in some water. We shouldn't have done that. Heck. So we're going to place that down. We got to put our filter upgrade in first. So let's make ourselves a filter upgrade. It shouldn't be hard, but I don't know the recipe. But down there, let's put the filter in now. Let it install. And now we're going to put some water right beneath it. Just a single block of water. And it's going to start pumping in some heavy water. Very slowly though. <laughs> Next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to make an elect uh, electrolytic, an electrolytic separator. This is going to take our heavy water and it's going to turn it into deuterium and oxygen. So we're going to need two things. Pumping our heavy water is going to turn that into deuterium and oxygen. And what we're going to do with the oxygen is we're just going to pump it right out of the front into a trash can. That way we never have to see it again. And all we're going to be left with is deuterium. And yeah, we can just pipe that right on into this uh, reactor port. Give ourselves some tubes and there we go. That's it. Deuterium is going to start flowing into here. Once we actually build the reactor. Actually, we can build the reactor. I'm not going to be going in there anytime soon. So now deuterium is going to be pumping onto into here. And we are halfway done with what we need to do. Now all we got to do is make our tritium. And we are going to be pretty much done. Laser amplifier is still uh, charging up at 100, 100 million FE. Still need 300 more million. So how we get tritium is we're going to be pumping lithium into a solar neutron activator. And it's going to give us tritium. And since we're dealing with a solar neutron activator, we are going to be heading over to our favorite dimension, the blue skies, ever bright dimension, where it is always sunny. Let's call it Philadelphia. All right, guys, so we are in our very favorite ever bright dimension, and we are going to be making ourselves a solar neutron activator. Another one, because we made one in the last episode. Not hard to make. Well, kind of hard to make. Slightly hard to make. And let's see. I just placed this one down <laughs> and that really screwed me over. So let's let's think about this for a second. Let's put it right here. There we go. That looks like a great place to put it. Now what we need to do is we need to pump this full of lithium. And how we're going to do that is I have a bunch of lithium. Whoa, didn't know I had that much. So I've got a bunch of lithium dust. We're going to pipe that into a chemical oxidizer and it's going to make ourselves some lithium. Then we're going to pipe that directly into our solar neutron activator. This magnificent, gorgeous thing right here. Hey guys, future me here. I was editing and I realized I didn't actually go over how to get a lithium for the tritium that we need to use. So I'm going to do that real fast with these two little... Uh, structures behind me. These are thermal evaporation tanks. Uh, what they do is they take in um, a liquid and it like changes it to something else, <laughs> you know, depending on the liquid. So this one we are pumping in water and it is being turned uh, with extremely high heat into brine. And then we are piping that brine into another thermal evaporation tank and it is turning it into liquid lithium. And the solar neutron activator uses uh, gaseous lithium. So we got to turn the liquid into a gas using a rotary condensator. And remember to get it from a liquid, which is over here, to a gas, which is over here on the left side, you need to toggle the operation to get it to go liquid to gas. Default is gas to liquid, so be sure to remember to change it liquid to gas, right to left. Another thing to note is these thermal evaporation tanks, they require you to be very hot. You see down here, I have this bar and it's filled to the brim with heat. Uh, in order to get it so hot, we actually, let's come down here to my secret hole. We have what are called resistive heaters. And what these do is they take RF, or just power in general, and it turns it into heat. And you pipe it out using these thermodynamic conductors, uh, which is just a heat pipe, basically. And you pipe it up into some uh, valves. You can't really see one, right? Let me see if I can open one up. 
Yeah, a valve. Look at that. And when you place down these resistive heaters, they're going to be, uh, the usage is going to be set to a 40 FE per tick max. And that's only going to give you, uh, I don't even know, honestly, like 500 uh, Kelvin, which is not a lot. You need a much higher number to get the tanks producing a lot. So what you do is just come down here. Uh, I changed mine to 500. You just type in the bottom 500 and or whatever number you want to use, depending on how much power you have. I have too much power, so I can't really run out. <laughs> uh, so and it changes that and the higher the more fe you use the higher the temperature will be all right so now that we're producing tritium we've got our tank ready right here we are going to pipe it directly into this tank boom there we go now look at that we've got six thousand millibuckets of tritium made already so now that we've got the tritium made let's go back to our fusion reactor and it's still not charged 259 million fe will we ever get there probably not but anyways guys we got our tank down Let's start pumping that into the reactor, just like so. There we go, so we are full on both the deuterium and the tritium for our reactor. While we wait on this, let's go over one last thing that we're gonna need to do for the fusion reactor. Let's get our, we got a chemical infuser right here. We're gonna put that right in between the deuterium and tritium pipes. What this infuser is gonna do is it's gonna take the deuterium and tritium and it's gonna turn it into DT fuel. Uh, and this brings us to the final step of making our fusion reactor. We're going to need what is called a fulrum. I don't know why it's called that. It's not very hard. We just need four gold dust into a metallurgic infuser filled with carbon, which isn't hard to make at all. Uh, we've got that set up already. Let me just go to it. And a whole room. Look at that. So what the whole room's going to do is we're going to fill it with our DT fuel. We've got this whole room, and what we're going to do with it is we're going to put it right here in this plus sign, right below this DT fuel. It's not going to take much. It just stores 10 millibuckets. <laughs> not much at all. This whole, what this whole room is going to do is it's going to kickstart our fusion reactor. So we're just going to put that in here. And the last thing we need to do is wait for our laser to power up. So I guess I've got everything else set up. I'll be right back with that. Oh, guys, so we finally got our 400 million FE. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm really excited for this. So we have our we have our fuel pumping in. We have our whole room in the fusion reactor. Now all we got to do is we got to activate this switch and it'll pump it in. I kind of want to do it remotely so we can see it out here. Uh, I'm going to figure that out real fast. All right, guys, so we've got enough power. We've got everything ready. So let's let's do this. Let's do this thing. It's gonna happen really fast. Well, freak. Oh no. And it used all of the... You know, guys, I forgot to go over one thing. We just lost all of that power. Forgot to go over one thing. We need what's called a laser focus matrix. Just completely slipped my mind. Not hard to make at all. I, was, I don't know why I didn't make it. There we go freaking laser beams and whatever now it's ready so once this powers up again um we can get it started while we wait for our amplifier to recharge i've gone ahead and made ourselves another little room and it looks extremely janky right now but um it won't when i'm done with it this is going to be used for a super critical phase shifter what this is going to do is going to allow us to make antimatter, which is another step to making the, all the mod start because we're going to need antimatter for a couple of the items in it. And it is kind of difficult to make, not very. We're going to need a lot of plutonium and pol pol polonium. We're going to need a lot of plutonium and polonium and HDPE sheets, which we thankfully do have a lot of. And we're going to need a bunch of reactor glass as well. And we're going to need some of these ports. So let's go ahead and make it. We're going to need 60 SPS casings. We're going to need 122 reactor glass and three SPS ports. All right, guys, we actually ended up running out of our HDPE for these SPS casings. So while I wait on my system to make more of those, let's go over this supercharged coil. We're going to need two of those. And what this is going to do is just going to pump a bunch of power into the, into the SPS uh, thing itself. And that's how it's going to make antimatter. You know, science, that's how it works. But yeah, so we're gonna need two more laser, uh, lasers, just lasers, and we're gonna make two supercharged coils. So yeah, let's do that real fast. All right, got our coils. All we need now is more HDPE. All right, we got everything we needed. Look at that. Everything we needed. Absolutely everything. So to start off, I am going to place down these ports right here. 
We need a port right here, and we need a port right here. Only one of them has to be powered. You see? We've got this connected to my fusion reactor, so once we finally get it started, we will also get this started. Put that right there, and we're going to put some coils right there. Look at that. Just like that. Next, we're going to build the frame. And it's super easy to build the frame. I just built this outline. What are you going to be doing? Just like the fusion reactor, is going to be making this pattern fill with glass. That pattern right there, you're going to make on all six sides. So yeah, I'm just going to do that real fast. Whoops. All right, and you know you did it right if it sparks red. Oh yeah, so we built or we built the super critical phase shifter. Now we just got to get enough power to power it. And what we're going to do is we got to have our ender tank right here. All right, and the way you power the super critical phase shifter, you pump it full of polonium and you pipe in a bunch of power and it creates antimatter. And well, it creates antimatter gas and it takes like a thousand um, millibuckets of antimatter to make one antimatter pellet. And this thing, this thing's slow, so it's going to take a minute, <laughs> but we got to get there first. Almost there. 400. Okay. It only took two hours. Let's go. My recording's actually at two hours. All right, guys. So as soon as I flip this switch, let me make sure I have everything ready. I do not want to sit through that again. Okay. We're full of deuterium. Got full of tritium. Got our whole room in place. All right. As soon as I flip the switch, it's going to activate and you know that's ready because it's gonna look really cool. So let's flip the switch. Look at that. Look at that. We got a fusion reactor going. Oh, that's so cool. Look at that. Cubes. <laughs> Just cubes. <laughs> They're all melding into each other. It looks so cool. And yeah, it's just producing, producing power now. And this thing gets up to like 200 million RF per tick, but it's got to warm up first. You see, if, if you see our little uh, energy bar up in the top left, it looks like it's filling up faster and faster. And what's going to happen is these cubes are going to start filling up faster and faster, and it'll eventually uh, get to its maximum uh, speed. And if you come up here, you can change how much uh, injection, the injection rate of this. So right now it's currently set to two which is the minimum. And that will give us a max power generation of 400,000 uh, FE per tick. Well, we want to be more than that, so let's bump that up. I think our setup with just one pump and one solar neutron activator is going to give us about uh, enough for 20. About 20 injection rate. Yeah, so our passive at 20, our passive is going to be 4 million FE per tick. Which is awesome. <laughs> it's super awesome. And the cool thing about a fusion reactor is that it actually will not explode. Oh my gosh, this thing's going crazy. <laughs> I was trying to talk. I just got distracted. But the cool thing about a fusion reactor is that it will not explode. You could run out of fuel. Nothing. It can get too hot. Nothing. It will not explode. This thing is completely safe, which is super cool. Now let's get over to our super critical phase shifter. So I've got it disconnected from my power right now. All right, so as soon as I connect to power, it will activate. So watch this. Boom. Didn't activate. <laughs> Whoops. Whoa, okay, I figured it out. <laughs> Whoa, this thing's loud. All right, guys, so with a super critical phase shifter, let me get closer to it. It's going to take all this polonium and it's going to turn it into, it's going to take a thousand millibuckets of polonium and turn it to one millibucket of antimatter, which is crazy how much that, that takes. And then it's going to take a thousand millibuckets of antimatter to make one antimatter pellet. So that, that just shows you how much <laughs> we're going to need to be producing with this. Another thing I forgot to go over is this chemical crystallizer. So when we make our antimatter with this supercritical phase shifter uh it's just gonna be in a gaseous state and we can't really do anything with it so what we got to do is we got to pump it into a chemical crystallizer and it'll just take a thousand uh millibuckets and turn it into one pellet so we've currently got two pellets i think we have enough for four though we just gotta give it some power look like at that impossible material and i got it the impossible material but anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to stick around and watch some more of my episodes. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye well